Hey everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing as well as an overview of this very exciting new video card from Asus. This is the Ares 2. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box and in case you're not familiar with the Ares 2, well I don't know where you've been, but uh, basically what this is is two GPUs on the same video card, so it's a dual GPU card and uh, those two GPUs are both the 7970 gigahertz edition. Uh, so the Radeon HD uh, Tahiti XT2 version of that, so a really high-end GPU, and they fit two of them on the same card. We will show you more as we proceed here. Uh, so of course, uh, graphics powered by AMD, their new GCN architecture uh, that's uh, been powering the 7000 series of video cards. This does support Affinity technology, so you can actually push five or six monitors from the single card out of the box. Uh, you can switch a little switch on the card to switch between five and monitor, five and six monitor mode. Uh, you of course have AMD Crossfire technology that's actually built into the card because you get uh, dual crossfire right out of the box, uh, two uh, GPUs on the same card. You can, of course, combine two of these cards together if you have deep pockets, and in that case you'd be going with a quad crossfire X setup. Uh, of course, AMD's GCN architecture again is powering these cards. Uh, you can also, of course, get the AMD Catalyst software, uh, which features the AMD uh, drivers and uh, I will mention that as of the filming of this video, Catalyst version 13.1 is available. All right, here's some more specs on the side of the box. So bear in mind, 7970 gigahertz edition, that's Tahiti XT2, not Tahiti XT. Uh, so those uh, do run at higher frequencies uh, from AMD, but uh, Asus has actually cranked both of them up to run at 1100 megahertz uh, on this particular card. It runs on a PCI Express Gen 3 bus, uh, so I would recommend you go with the PCI, Expre PCI Express Gen 3 for the system. So uh, I'm going to recommend a uh, Intel X79 platform or an Intel uh, Z77 platform. And I would also recommend, uh, if you're going for a processor, that you go with at least the 3770K because um, if you go with anything less than that, you could potentially limit the performance of this video card. You get six gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, so uh, three gigabytes each for each GPU. Boost clock up to 1100 megahertz, base clock of 1050. It's gonna be running at 1100 megahertz most of the time because it will do that uh, whenever it is uh, the thermals are within range and the thermals on this card stay very chilly um, by a wide margin, as, especially when compared to every other high-end video card I've ever tested, pretty much. Uh, we also have a memory clock of 6600 megahertz effectively, it's actually uh, 1650 megahertz quad pumped. Uh, you also have a memory interface of 768-bit, seven, it's actually 384-bit times 2. Max digital resolution via the dual link uh, DVI or the display port outs of 2560 by 1600. Max VGA resolution, I don't know why you'd be going with the VGA monitor and this card, but it's still there, 2048 by 1536. DirectX 11 support, of course. There's your I.O. on the back. You get uh, two DVI outs. One is single link and one is can switch between, I'm sorry, one is dual link and one can switch between single and dual link. And that's going to be uh, switching between four, I'm sorry, five and six monitor support mode. Uh, you also get four full size, nat full size native display port connectors. Uh, for adapters, they're listed right there. I'm going to be going over all the contents of this box, so I will move on. Uh, we also have a minimum 850 watt system power supply with a 12 volt current rating, rating of 42 amps. Uh, to, that's for the video card and your entire system. And I will say, if you're planning on overclocking this, I would go even beyond that because in my overclocking tests I done this card, which I'm going to be showing in a separate video, uh, we actually, I actually hit uh, higher than 850 watts. So make sure you have a quality power supply, and I recommend actually going a bit beyond the recommendation from Asus. You also need three 8-pin PCI Express supplemental power connectors. Here are the dimensions of the card itself. It's 11.8 inches long, so also uh, make sure that you have room in your computer case for this card. And uh, here's a, a closer look at the card itself for at least a little bit of a breakout. So this actually features an all-in-one liquid cooling solution for the GPUs. So, so here's a quick demo of the loop. The cold liquid goes through that way. It gets warm from the uh, heat from the GPUs and then it disperses it via the nice thick radiator that is included. Uh, we also have uh, performance numbers here. So they're actually saying 13% faster than a GTX 690. Them some fighting words, Asus. Also 130% faster than an HD 7970 by itself. So, uh, of course, this is a very high performance uh, video card. One card, six displays, six gigs GDDR5 memory. GDDR5 memory, I should say. That pretty much does it for the outside of the box. Next, we have the box that's inside the box. Actually, real quick, this is a limited edition video card. There's actually only a thousand of these made worldwide. So, um, bear that in mind. These might be difficult to get your hands on. Also, unlimited power. I think not Asus. This actu card actually has a TDP of 600 watts. So 
Just calling them out. Calling them out where I see the uh, you know, incorrect information there. <laughs> that's, ju that's just a tagline, of course. But here's the box that's inside the box. Um, in case you were worried about packaging, you should have no concerns with this video card actually making it to you uh, in one piece because you've got the packing inside the retail box. Actually, this whole thing, even the retail box itself, shipped inside another uh, round box. So it had plenty of protection, let me just put it that way. So here you can see you've got a nice uh, silver case for this. It kind of adds to the, uh, the joy of opening it and gives a, you know, gives a little bit of a Pulp Fiction vibe to be honest. Uh, you can actually change the uh, codes on the locks here if you want to, so you can reuse this, ca reuse this case. And then uh, there it is. So we have some really thick, nice foam padding in here. Again, you're going to make sure that this card arrives to you with no incidents or issues to be spoken of. Here's the video card itself with the attached radiator. It's a closed cooling loop. We're going to finish on that and give you guys a nice close-up look at that. I'm going to pull out the remainder of the accessories that are included and then I will tell you guys what they are. All right, so they have included two 120 millimeter fans so you can set up that radiator in push-pull and I would recommend doing that. That's how I ran all of my tests and it was a very effective solution. All right, so uh, here first off is your limited, uh, limited edition numbers and you will note that we are number 989, I think, 989 of 999, so we just got in there the last minute. It's just a, it's an actual piece of metal, but it's printed and etched on there, certifying that you have a limited edition video card from ASUS. We'll put that away. All right, next up we have a Crossfire Bridge, because again, if you're a baller, you can get two of these cards, you can link them together. That gives you Quad Crossfire X. And uh, I will say, if you're gonna go for Quad Crossfire X and you're going all out, that's, this is probably a good way to do it, because you get the, the, the liquid cooling's all taken care of for you. You don't need to worry about doing a custom loop. Uh, you also get a DVI to HDMI adapter, so if you're going with an HDMI native monitor, you can connect that. In this little plastic baggie, we have this seemingly nondescript little piece of rubber. What this actually is, and there's some adhesive on the bottom, this is meant to sit on top of a PCI Express bracket, and actually it will sit on top of the third PCI Express uh, the actual slot on your motherboard. What that is going to do is when this video card is actually installed, that will allow it to sort of rest on there and it actually gives it a fair uh, extra amount of support. So if you're concerned about the weight of this card, um, because it is fairly substantial, uh, make sure you drop that on. That will give it some extra support up against your motherboard. Also in here you have your ASUS ROG Republic of Gamers case badge. And then finally uh, mounting screws to attach the second 120 millimeter fan, so you'll notice the fans here with ROG logos on both sides. So you'll always have ROG no matter which way it's facing. And then again, this is going to be the exhaust side, so um, make sure that you position these so you're pulling in air one way, pushing air out the other way. All right, we have several uh, PCI Express connectors. So what these all are, all three of them, are six pin PCI Express PEG uh, adapter cables and that uh, combines two six pins into one eight pin because again you do need uh, three eight pin PCI Express power connectors to power the card. It's, it's a lot but when you consider that there's two GP GPUs in there um, it's not as much maybe when you're considering it. Here's your ASUS Ares driver and manual and I would recommend uh, heading over to the AMD website to download the latest uh, AMD Catalyst drivers, also the uh, ASUS website, you can get the latest uh, drivers and also their software over there. Uh, I did uh, do some overclocking with this as well. Again, that's going to be in a separate video, uh, but the uh, ASUS uh, GP Tweak software is a great companion for that. Let's you overclock it and set your voltage and everything. ASUS speed setup guide, and this is a pretty generic sort of uh, video card installation guide. And I'm actually kind of curious, since this card is so unique, I wonder how many of these things are actually maybe not quite 100% accurate for the installation of this card, but there you have it. Uh, if you want, you can check out our How to Build a Computer series as well. Oh look, here's a little bit of information on how to reset the numbers on your case over there, so you can reset that. All right, next up, video card itself. So here is the Aries 2 itself, and I can tell you guys this is a substantial card. It is uh, quite weighty, and that is for a variety of different reasons, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and list off some more specs while I have it right here. So um, as I already told you guys, of course, this uh, features dual GPUs, so um, each one is behind the four screws that you can see right there. That's about as close as I'm going to be able to show them to you here, uh, but the GPUs are 7970 uh, gigahertz editions, 
They uh, feature th 32 ROPs. They feature 2048 stream processors. Uh, it gives you 3072 megab megabytes per GPU of uh, GDDR5 memory on a 384-bit bus. Gives you a total memory bandwidth of 316.8 gigabytes per second, and that memory is running at 1650 megahertz, uh, so pretty beastly there. Now let's talk about the uh, construction of this card. I'm mainly talking about the card right now. Uh, you will notice that you have the two water cooling tubes that are feeding off of it over to the radiator. I'm going to kind of come back to the radiator, radiator and show you guys that a little bit more close up in just a minute. But you'll notice here, this is a this is a two slot, I'll call it a two slot plus card. If you flip around to this side, you can see dual slot right there. It is a little bit thicker than two slots, so while it will take up two slots in your PCI bracket, you might have difficulty actually fitting uh, anything in that third slot because the cooler, uh, this actually aluminum plate here, st sticks out a little bit beyond the two slots, but still uh, pretty, pretty impressive that Asus was able to fit the two GPUs as well as this entire cooling solution in the two slots. As far as the construction, um, I'm not going to disassemble this one for you guys, but I do have an exploded view of it, of it uh, to take a closer look at. So uh, we have this uh, styled CNC machined aluminum cover right here that has the uh, Aries 2 logo on it. Uh, two high performance cold plates on either side, one for each GPU. Uh, you'll also notice the uh, die cast heat sink assembly, of course, that's kind of holding the whole thing together. Uh, you have an LED that's going to light up your Aries 2 logo there on top. Specialty 12 layer PCB design uh, features DigiPlus VRM and uh, Super Alloy power, power design. Uh, so that's sort of a, a little bit of a demonstration of the uh, construction. Oh, also I should point out we have an aluminum black back plate on the back, uh, which also has the ASUS and the Aries 2 logos, because if you have this installed, at least in the majority of systems, this is the side you'll be looking at. So you'll see uh, ASUS and Aries 2 logos from just about every angle, which is quite nice. Uh, given that a lot of uh, cards look pretty nice, but how often do you actually look at this side? Now, apart from uh, the two uh, copper uh, cold plates that you have on there, you also have a small fan right here, although it does stay very quiet even when this card is under load. So the fan is actually primarily uh, there to cool off the actual capacitors in here and all the power delivery because Asus has uh, custom designed Digi, Digi Plus VRM 20 phase super alloy power power delivery. Uh, they're using their SAP chokes in here. They're using, which you can kind of see a little bit through the side, Nichicon caps. So those are the 10K, uh, 10,000 hour lifespan Nichicon caps as opposed to the two, 2K or 2,000 uh, life, 2000 hour life uh, lifespan caps that you see in a lot of uh, components. Uh, you also have built into this a Gen 3 PLX bridge. So that's giving you additional bandwidth uh, between uh, both of the GPUs. Uh, and again, just make sure that you have enough bandwidth because um, even with PCI Express Gen 3, you need you have a lot of data going back and forth on that 8 gigatexel per second PCI Express Gen 3 bus. There's your PCI Express Gen 3 connector right there. It's probably one of the most normal looking things on this card, actual standard PCI Express connector. So that's where you plug it into your motherboard, of course. Uh, and then flipping around to this side one more time, we'll talk about power again. 850 watt power supply recommended, 600 watt TDP just for the card itself, and that actually is quite a feat that ASUS was able to uh, design this entire card within that power envelope. Uh, so three 8-pin uh, PCI Express power connectors included, and then uh, there's an actual LED right next to each one, and that LED will be red. If the power is not connected, it'll turn green once it is connected and you are good to go. Now we're going to finish off here with a, a bit of a closer look at the radiator. So you'll notice the tubing sticking off here, and I'm going to get to a measurement of the tubing, or at least an approximate measurement. I'm going to say about 12 inches. You actually have a little bit more than 12 inches worth of tubing there, um, but given the fact that you need to sort of twist it and bend it a little bit to orient it how you want to, uh, 12 inches is about the, uh, the tubing length here that you get. You also notice this little fan lead. So one of them is already uh, connected to the fan that's attached to the radiator. Second one here is for that second fan, so you can set that up for push-pull. I'm going to twist this around in case any OCD folks are watching. All right, uh, next up here, of course, we have that fan that's pre-mounted to the radiator, and then we have the radiator itself. So you notice this is a double-wide radiator, very thick. Uh, I'm going to give another approximate measurement here again because it's hard to measure radiator fins when they're kind of recessed within the radiator. So actual radiator thickness is about 48 millimeters. 
and I know I'm not showing you guys there, but there you go. About 48 millimeters on my upside down ruler uh, from side to side. Radiator fins are actually recessed a little bit, so it's a little bit, a uh, little bit thinner than that as far as the radiator itself. However, uh, again, with the cards and push pull. Uh, in all of my testing, I think the most I saw, and this was actually in a really uh, extreme test, was uh, about 64 degrees Celsius. Most of the time, it was having a tough time even getting this thing past 60. And that's with overclock 7970s running at 1100 megahertz. And that's even when I did an overclocking test, and I was able to overclock this to about 1225 in the limited amount of time that I had to set up some overclocking. But again, that's all for a separate video. This is just an unboxing, so there is your closer look at the Aries 2. Okay, one last visual aid here before I leave. This card here in front is the stock or reference design 7970 from uh, AMD. So there's sort of a quick comparison of the two. If you want to get an idea for the size of this one. Again, both two slot cards. But there you go from the side. So quite a bit of extra height on this card as well. But there we go. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Asus Ares 2 featuring two AMD Radeon HD 7970 gigahertz GPUs, uh, closed loop custom designed cooling solution, as well as PCB, as well as power delivery, and all the goodness you get from Asus, plus that awesome carrying case. If you guys would like to see uh, more tech videos like this one, or if you'd like to see my overclocking and benchmarking demonstration with this card, you can find that kind of stuff on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.